Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we have some pro revenge stories and our first story of the day is by Chicken Nuggy 79 So behind my sister's back, I will waste your time. This happened a few years ago but felt like this story belonged here. My sister was pregnant at the time and didn't have much money to get baby stuff brand new. She decided to use an online marketplace for used baby clothes and furniture. She had found a changing table that she liked and messaged the seller about the details. They had agreed to meet at a public place for the transaction on a certain date. The day before the scheduled meet, my sister had already made plans with a friend with a truck. She messaged the seller about the final details and then the seller revealed that she had sold it to someone else already. My sister told her that was messed up that she had agreed to sell to her and already made arrangements with a truck. The seller was not apologetic whatsoever and basically had a sorry, not sorry attitude. I can see my sister was pretty upset by this lady and decided to inflict some petty revenge on my own. I found the seller's other items for sale and messaged her myself about a meetup to buy one of the other items. We exchanged numbers and she was none the wiser of the connection between me and my sister. I texted her that I was on my way to the meeting point the day of but really I was sitting on my couch watching Netflix. She texted she was almost there, and a few minutes later she told me where she was parked and what her car looked like. I continued texting every few minutes that I was caught in traffic or at traffic lights. 45 minutes later, she becomes irate and said she couldn't wait any longer and left. I finished my movie on Netflix with a crap-eating grin of satisfaction. Next time, maybe she will think before screwing someone over. So, in your guys' opinions, do you think this will actually make the seller think twice about screwing someone over? Or do you think in the grand scheme of things, it'll just be 45 minutes wasted for them and probably won't change their mindset? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Our next story is by Psyker11. Won't allow the bartender to turn down the jukebox volume? Okay... Listen to music you didn't play. So this happened to me about 8 years ago. I finally turned 21 and my parents wanted me to shoot on their teams in the bar dart leagues. One was a Thursday night league and one was a Friday morning league for the third shifters that started at like 8 or 9 am. Because I shot the night before, I was generally hung over for Friday AM league and I am by no means a morning person in general, so I'm typically crabby for the first few hours of being awake. And on this particular day, we had to shoot at this bar that I did not care for. When we started to shoot our match, this dude on the other team decided to start playing the jukebox. Normally not a big deal, except that it was at an extremely loud volume, and it was the screamo hard rock music, and this type of music I do not care for, especially so loud and I'm so hungover. This was also when playing from your phone was still somewhat new, and not many people realized you can skip songs and play without physically going to the jukebox. I had asked the bartender if they could turn the volume down as there were only 9 people in the bar, 4 people per team, and the bartender. The people in the bar were not talking loud enough to justify the music volume, but the dude yelled at me for asking it to be turned down, saying he paid for it, I want to listen to it loud. Being this was their home bar and he was probably a regular there, the bartender sided with them. After the second song, I couldn't take it anymore. I signed on the jukebox app and I loaded my phone with over $40 worth of credits and started playing the most annoying, to the other team at least, it was music I liked, non-screamo music I could find. And of course I paid the premium price so my songs got to be played next. So his next song got interrupted with, wait for it, Barbie Girl. Oh yeah, you know the one. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. His teammates look at him like, what the freak, dude? You play this? He's confused like, no, I didn't freaking play this crap. I must have hit the wrong button. Remember, these internet jukeboxes aren't like the old ones where you hit the letter and the number. So there's really no way you could have accidentally went from insert screamo song here to Barbie girl. 
My team knew what was going on because I showed them my plan. Next song was a slower country song, then after that was some Backstreet Boys or NSYNC I don't exactly remember. I do know it was either pop, country, anything but rock, anything but screamo. But with each song, the guy who played the music originally just kept getting more and more mad, saying he didn't play this, while his buddies were giving him crap about the music selection because he was the only one physically at the jukebox. Meanwhile, my team and I are all laughing and singing, having a grand time. Whatever song played next was the straw that broke the camel's back. He slams his fist on the bar and screams at the bartender to skip this crap, and he wants his money back due to the broken jukebox that wasn't playing his songs. I calmly stopped the bartender before she skipped it and said that if you skip any of these songs, you will have to reimburse me as I paid for them. I showed her my phone and bartender realized what had happened, but the dude was still confused, mad and clueless. Now the conversation is how I remember it, it was 8 years ago so it's not word for word but pretty darn close. What do you mean you played this? You didn't even go up to the jukebox. I played them from my phone. Wait, you can do that? Yep, that's a nice feature of those internet jute boxes. You can download an app and never have to get up from your bar stool. But they should have played after mine, I played first. Yeah, but I paid extra to have them skipped. Well, how many did you play? About $40 worth of songs. Are you freaking kidding me? I wanted to listen to my songs. Well, you could have, if you would have let the bartender turn down the music when I had asked. I'm hungover and don't care for what you played, but I maybe could have dealt with it if it was quieter. Well, can you move some of your songs so I can listen to mine while we shoot? I'll turn the volume down now. Doesn't work that way. I can't change the order. Well, then I'll pay more and skip your songs. Yeah, that won't work either. Your songs will go to the end of the priority play, but in front of your non-priority plays you had played earlier. This is freaking stupid. When will my songs come on? I looked at the app to see how many songs I had left and kind of guessed at about 3 minutes a song, give or take. About an hour or so after we're done shooting, dude was so mad cussing and complaining about the music. But if he would have just been somewhat of a decent human being, he could have got his music and I would have saved 40 bucks. I mean, it's hard to feel sorry for the other guy. If they're blasting screamo music super loud in this bar, needlessly loud, and someone wants to turn it down just a little bit because it's crazy loud, you would hope that maybe they'd be a little considerate. That said, OP had every right to do what they did anyways, it's an open jukebox with an app. You could have done that anytime you wanted, regardless. This next story is by Moljills, young girl being obnoxious, gets mouth full of fart. Once upon a time, in a long Primark queue I waited. A five-year-old girl was next in the queue with her mother. Pre-COVID, so less than a foot away from me, she was literally the worst. Throwing a tantrum, making rude comments about her mother for not buying her certain things, being obnoxious to other people in the queue, and generally being loud and intolerable. And the mother wasn't doing a thing about it. I must have listened to her nonsense for at least 15 minutes because the queue was barely moving. Well, it just so happens that her head height was pretty much identical to the height of my butt and I had some slippery thunder brewing. Yep, you guessed it, that obnoxious girl got a point blank mouthful of my silent fury. Boy did she make a stink about it. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it was a belter. Hints of cream spinach and old wet leather. Don't know what I'd been eating, but I'm still proud of how my colon dealt with that situation to this day. I'm pretty sure nobody was going to call me out. I was a silent but deadly bystander minding his own business. The only thing I regret was how many innocent victims paid the price for my social justice that day. Because to be honest, the smell was so bad, I might as well have crapped myself. Well, this was certainly one of the more gross revenge stories I've ever read on this channel. Very descriptive too. They didn't hold back at all, both in description and in the queue in front of the five-year-old girl. Anyways, on to the next story. 
This next story is by underscore Mr. Underscore Evil Underscore. Guy parks in my parking space, so I block him in for about three hours. So let me lay out the scene for you. This happened about a year back, late in the evening. I was hanging out at my cousin's place and I had to head home to feed my dogs. Let me explain our parking. Since I had taken the car out, there's a property next to our house that belongs to my father's brother. There's nothing constructed on it, but there's like five truckloads of dirt and mud with enough space by the road for a couple of cars. And that is where we always park both our vehicles. So as I reach home, I see an unknown vehicle parked in my space and I was visibly annoyed because this happens every time. Either someone parks in our space or double parks and blocks us in. So I decided to serve some petty revenge. I carefully park my car in such a way that I was blocking him in and at the same time not blocking him. There was enough space that if he wiggled his car back and forth enough, he'd be able to get out without damaging any vehicles parked there. After that was done, I headed home, served the dogs and headed for a shower. Now, I take long showers and I had to dress up because I was heading back to my cousin's place. So it was about two and a half hours after I was done with everything. I head back down and get on my bike, ready to leave when I see someone trying to flag me down. I head over to see a guy, maybe in his late 20s, asking me if that's my car. I ask him which one, the one that's blocked or the one doing the blocking. He gets annoyed and points to my car, to which I confirm that it is my car. He demands that I move it immediately as he was getting late for something. I don't remember what. I then asked him whether this was his property and if he was allowed to park there. He said that he knew the people who stayed in that house and that they gave him permission to park there. The idiot was pointing at my house and I know for a fact that nobody gave him permission to park there. I had the biggest crap eating grin on my face when I told him that the house he was pointing at was my house, this was my property, and he didn't have any permission to park there. His face lost all expression and he was visibly flustered. He then continued to demand that I move my vehicle so that he could leave. I just told him that he should have thought about that before parking on private property. I then got on my bike and left. His face looked like as if someone told him no for the first time. It was priceless. I returned home a few hours later to find that he and his car were gone. I went to check if he damaged my car but he surprisingly left without any damages on the car. People can be so entitled sometimes. The guy really doesn't have any room to be super upset at OP for. They decided to park in a place that they didn't have express permission to park at. I'm not sure if OP overdid it or not here, but it'll definitely be a lesson that hopefully the guy will consider the next time they choose to park somewhere. Our next story is by Dear Ghouls, Lady wanted to get drinks free, so I made them worth that price. I'm a bartender and the area I work in is upper class and petty as heck. As I tell people all the time, I don't go out here, I just work here. One random night not too long ago, I'm making drinks at the well for servers to take to their customers at their tables while the other bartenders handle our bar top guests. It's the middle of our rush and one of my servers comes up with a drink one-fourth full and sets it down saying the customer hates it and was demanding a different drink. Specifically, they wanted a vodka mojito. I was too busy to put up a fight and the poor girl looked run down already from the night, so I went ahead and made it, even though it was obvious the woman was just looking for free crap. The server runs the drink to the table, and it happens to be the table closest to my well, so I can see and hear everything. She sets it down and hurries off to another table, waving her down, and I watch as this woman slams the drink until there is nothing but mint and ice left in the glass, with maybe half an ounce of liquid in the bottom, then turns around and grabs the server again. Um, I specifically asked for this with vodka. Yes ma'am it is. I know what vodka tastes like, this is clearly rum. Tell your bartender to make it right this time, I'm not paying for this. The server tried to say something, but was rudely cut off and told to get it remade again. So she picks up the glass and walks over to me. 
I'm so sorry, OP, she starts, and I immediately tell her it's okay, I saw the whole thing. Girl, don't worry, I got you. So I remade the woman's drink. One virgin mojito coming up. Nothing but mint, lime, simple, and soda water. I cannot explain the satisfaction we both felt when that drink hit the table and we watched the woman sip it and go, now that is vodka. You get what you pay for. It would be an interesting experiment to take the people that mooch off of free drinks like this and just keep serving them soda water basically and see if as the night goes on they begin to act a little bit more tipsy even though they've been taking in no alcohol whatsoever. Although I'm sure that would require them trying to get a lot of free drinks. This next story is by Angie0x0. If you're going to be impatient, you can wait longer. So I was doing laundry at my apartment complex's laundromat. My clothes are in the dryer. Usually, I'm good about being there before they're done, but this time, I was a little late. No more than two or three minutes late. Someone is waiting for me because they wanted the dryers I was using. There are plenty of others, but I get it. Some people just have their favorite machines they know work good and aren't broken or whatever. So she's witching at me about how incredibly rude and inconsiderate it was for me to not be on time to get my clothes out. And I totally get it. I should have been there, but it wasn't more than three minutes, so it's really not as big of a deal as she's making it seem. Anywho, I'm there to pick up the clothes so she can use the dryer she wants. But what's this? Crap! They're not as dry as I want them. They were perfectly dry. So I keep them in for another hour. If she's still there when I go back, I'm gonna do it again. Two dryers are $1.85 each. That's the best $3.70 I've ever spent. It's good revenge against somebody that's annoying, but I would be afraid for the condition of the clothes being completely dry and going through the dryer again for an hour. Hopefully they're not too bad or maybe OP doesn't care about them that much, I don't know. And our final story of the day is by Burrow Stalwart 3, Chewing Tobacco. I was at a party several years back, which was being hosted in the basement of my friend's house. The basement could be accessed by either a main stairway which went up to the house, but there was also a back stairway that went straight up to the garden. Most of the people there weren't smokers, but even the ones that were could not be bothered with this one guy who insisted on lighting up in this fairly confined space. A few people asked him to go outside with a cigarette because he was stinking the place up and whatnot, but he just laughed it off. He hadn't had more than three drags on this thing when I asked if I could have a quick poll or two. I don't know if he just wanted an ally at that point, but he said yes. I wasn't a smoker and had never smoked, but the only reason I had asked was so I could bring it to my lips and take a bite out of the lower half like it was an apple. It was pretty gross, but definitely worth it to see this guy's face. Turned out, it was his last one as well. If it's not that kind of party where you can be smoking around people, then it's pretty darn inconsiderate to be lighting up and puffing around everybody because nobody wants that secondhand smoke unless they're in that kind of environment. So I definitely don't have pity for this guy, but it didn't sound like OP necessarily made out like a bandit either. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today, so if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.